How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Watcher of Realms. My name is Jeremy and today I, I have to do a video. Um, other content creators have, have already done similar ones, but I had to do a video talking about the two new heroes that are coming to the game this weekend. I wasn't really excited until I spent some time digging into their kits and holy cow... I'm really kicking myself in the butt for not saving some of the summons I, I just did over the last couple of days. Um, but uh, let, let's dive into these kits because these, these two heroes are just too good to not talk about. Alright, so if you go to the event calendar, there's two things coming up this Friday. Special Divine Summoning and Special Invocation for... This gal, Calypso's in there. Most of us know Calypso. I'm not going to talk about her. I want to talk about Aelin. And then I want to talk about the Dark Invocation hero, Falcia. Oh my gosh, you guys. Have, have you read about her? Have you watched like Fastidious's videos on her? Because this chick is an absolute beast. Oh my god. I, I'm so excited to have her. My fear at this point is that I'm not going to get her because according to Fastidious, she is a limited character, much like uh, Captain Reeve, um, to where you, you're you only going to be able to get her, it sounds like, maybe this weekend, unless they decide down the road to open it up and, and bring her into the regular pool. But I want to do something a little bit different than some of my content creator friends. I want to dive a little bit into the art and the story. Um, because I don't feel like we pay enough attention. A, a lot of, a lot of CCs and, and in general, a lot of us just kind of glance over, oh, she looks cool. But I like to actually take the time to appreciate the attention to detail. Um, you know, her eyes, she's a demon hunter, right? So it, it kind of, she kind of reminds me of like, like the movie Blade, right? With Wesley Snipes, where he's got like these crazy eyes. He, he's very human, um, in, in terms of the characteristics of his look, but there was something about him that you could tell he wasn't human in his vampire slaying, right? And she, Falcia, like, the attention to detail, just, I mean, it, it, I don't even know, I can't even zoom in, it makes me sad, but, th like, this attention, the details around her eyes and just her eyes in general scream, I'm not human, but I'm here to save humans. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just got that almost like a, almost like a demigod kind of a vibe. Her armor, like these shoulder pieces are absolutely sick. I love the the blend of like these dragon scale um, over her right boob, um, you know, to the details of the belt. I mean, if you move her, the belt like actually moves. But probably one of my favorite things about her kit are her blades. I love the glowing, like flaming magical look of the blades. And I love that they did a du duo tone or a, a bi-tone where they have a red blade and, and a light blade. So to me, it's like it represents good and evil um, as a demon, as a demon hunter. That That's just, it's so appropriate, right? Um, her boots, pretty freaking sweet. Kill her boots, man! But... In general, just her armor, the dragon scale. I love the uh, the lace down the sides and these buckles. It's just so rad, and I really do appreciate the the color embellishments. I love the like the reds mixed in with the blue, silver, and black. Like it just kind of gives it that pop. Um, and I love that they gave her streaks in her hair. It kind of you know takes me back to to earlier times. My wife used to do that and blonde out like strips of her hair. Super super hot. Um, love the braids. Like the hairstyle is just dope. Um, and then she's just got this big ass broadsword on her back. <laughs> like this one, I don't fully understand. Um, it, like where do you put these ones when you want to take this, this beast out? Right? Like, so that part of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me from an overall aesthetic, but in general, I mean, a chick that can wield a sword like that, I mean, that's a chick you do not want to trifle with. Um, so anyhow, I wanted to take a second and, and appreciate the overall look of this hero. Um, bravo. Bravo, guys. The the art team has done a fantastic job. Uh, I just, I love the little horns coming off. It just, man, you would not want to, like, have her backhand you with those. Whew. That would not be good. Anyhow, <clears throat> the other thing I'm wanting to take time to do 
is look at the story. So I'm gonna read this. You don't have. You can fast forward to when I go over the kit. I'll, I'll uh, actually break it out so you can see the different segments. But I think we need to take the time and read the story. Um, we're not in a hurry in this game, right? This is a game about grinding, and I think um, we as players, uh, we as content creators in a community, need to dive into the lore because a game is can be very playable but it becomes long lasting when there's good lore and good story built into it because you find yourself appreciating each individual character more if you know their history know where they come from so i haven't read this yet we're gonna read through it together so and hopefully i don't stumble over my words but the tri-blade demon's bane so that might be where this third blade comes from um, the tri-blade, so she's wielding three. I just don't know where she puts these when she's ready to take out the big dog. Uh, but wield your blade with care, lest you become more monstrous than that you hunt. Old Masunian hunter's proverb. Falcia, the tri-blade demon's bane, is no stranger to pointed questions about the three swords she carries. Each blade serves a different purpose, whether it's to cut through scale, hide, or skin. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. So each blade has a different use, a different use case in what it cuts. In Taya, there exists an elusive tribe of monster hunters who have mastered the three blades. From a young age, each hunter is trained to track and kill as assortments of wild beasts. When a hunter becomes of age, they take the vow to protect the innocent from monsters. I absolutely love that. These hunters are believed to be fearless, and if you buy Falcia a drink, she'll regale you with tales as gruesome as they are frightening. Ooh, I, I kind of want to hang out with her. I want, I want to buy this chick a beer. I want to hear these tales. Uh, but the stories of demons and ghosts aren't the ones that haunt her. One might wonder how a monster hunter can afford to cover an entire tavern's drinks for a whole week. But as Falcia tells it, there's good coin to be made in hunting beasts. One of her most popular stories involves a group of traders who sought her help to rid themselves of a pesky dragon. The guild boss, maybe? They offered enough pay to cover a year of hard work. When Falcia recounts the tale, she embellishes the details. The acrid smell of smoke in the air. The sting of fire searing her shoulder. The dragon's final defeated bellow. She leaves off the clutch of dragon eggs that the traders had set their greedy eyes on. The dragon, you see, was merely an obstacle standing in the way of their wealth. The dragon was slain, but the traders mysteriously met their ends too. Even years later, the tale keeps Falcia awake on long nights, and so she entertains herself by spending her ill-gotten coin on drink and entertainment. If there's a job, she'll do it. She swore on her swords that she would protect the innocent, but lately, she's begun to wonder if the monsters are the most dangerous prey she hunts. Woo! That's so good! That is so well written! Holy moly, I really enjoyed that. We're going to do this with, with all the heroes that come out going forward because that is well written. Bravo, uh, Montan, Moonton. Um, man, so the blades each cut different things. Uh, she she get she's basically a bounty hunter for beasts. Um, freaking cool story. Uh, that that's awesome. And I was thinking the other day, um, you know, when I was building out Valkyra, uh, I got Zilla too. I want to see more like good to offset a lot of the demon and like the dark. Um, you know, I love Valkyra being like the angelic Valkyrie. I want to see more of that. I love the big angel wings. Um, and I think this is a good compliment to offset the evil in the game. So really cool, really freaking cool. So let's dive into her kit real quick. Um, I mean, you can't really go real quick. There's a lot to her. She can be super confusing. Um, she is a fighter and she does normal damage. Um, sharp strategic mind and even sharper blade for any occasion kind of to go along with that lore so she actually deals mixed damage which is really neat um one of the few heroes i've seen if maybe not maybe even the only hero i i don't know i haven't really looked through every detail of every hero in the game yet but she has multi-strike attack and she also deals true damage so she is straight up dps master 
uh, after so her talent after performing the basic attack 20 times she gains demon slaying stance that lasts for 25 seconds additionally gains specialized attack speed so what I love about this, because I don't know necessarily what all this stuff is, but they build in this green link here. Demon Slaying Stance. Basic attack will deal an extra 160% true damage. And as I understand it, true damage is basically like it, the damage that would be dealt without any defense. So it basically ignores defense, which is awesome. I mean, the more you can get of that, the better. And, and if that's not correct for like this game... Please, by all means, in the comments, let me know the true definition. But as I understand it in other games that I've played, true damage is that dealt without having to go through a defense. Shadow Slash, which is her ultimate, if you didn't know, will deal 260% true damage five extra times. So if you get her into Demon Slaying Stance before you slap her ultimate, holy crap, she's going to do insane amounts of damage. If we go to her single target basic attack, it deals 75% normal damage and 75% magic damage to one enemy. So this obviously doesn't apply to air units, so you're not going to you know, be able to use magic damage on aerial units, that kind of thing. But on ground units, being able to do both types of damage, now it's only 75%, so it's not like this is not a huge smack at 75%, um, but it's still dealing both types of damage. So I think of like uh, the chap some of the Chapter 9 stuff, um, they don't uh, respond well to normal damage, but uh, they do to magic. So you can still get her moving that magic damage and still utilize her uh, against those. I, I think they call them golems or whatever. But <clears throat> her, you can see her um, uh, reach is one tile ahead of her and the tile she's on. Um, her shadow slash, like I said, is her ultimate. It is manually controlled. Uh, it costs 1,200. Um, you start with 900 and it lasts for 3.6 seconds. Uh, it deals 100% normal damage five times and then deals 100% magic damage five times to one enemy. So she could be an absolute monster in guild boss, especially if you pair her with like a Mari that brings that vulnerability to magic and physical damage. Um, for the uh, AMR, she's going to be awesome to use against Salazar. Well, it's not Salazar now. They brought in a new boss as of this morning. Um, with that update but uh, whoever the boss is she's gonna be able to deal both types of damage and she's hitting five times and you can get that damage boosted by 20 percent uh for each level so when you skill her up um so you can get an extra 60 percent uh total damage on these so 160 percent five times and 160 percent five times magic um and then you can get the skill cost down by 100 to 1100 um so or is that initial rage crap uh, help me out here guys in the comments um, I, I just went blank maybe I'll have to edit this but just tell me in the comments um, initial rage versus the I think this is the cost to actually deploy it and you start with 1200 initial or is it the other way around now, I'm just second guessing myself at this point anyhow moving on from the ultimate we go to her passive demon slayer's might when the hero is in demon slaying stance she also increases damage by 30% when the hero is shielded, increases damage by an extra 20%. So, holy crap, when you she goes into Demon Slaying Stance, which, reminder, basic attack deals an extra 160%. Uh, true damage, the uh, ultimate will deal 260% true damage five extra times. She also increases damage by 30% just by her passive. And if you have her paired with like a Vortex who over, uh, like, overheal shields her, she can deal another 20% on top of that. And you can bump it up by another 20%. It's insane, you guys. Like, the amount of damage she is going to pull out, put out is crazy. And that, uh, oops, that uh, falls into this next one, which is her Adrenaline Rush passive. When deployed, she immediately enters Demon Slaying Stance. So as soon as you put her on the board, she goes into that Demon Slaying, sla Demon Slaying Stance, dealing all that extra damage. Um, and so if you can, and that lasts for 25 seconds. So if you can get her ultimate up, you can literally put her into the fight and she can absolutely wreck shop right when you drop her in. So I, I see some uses in the arena for that. Um, wait, you know, like uh, in the uh, single target. You wait till they get in there and drop them on there. And then, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, she's going to be bonkers. Like, I, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not saving up more summons. 
uh, unfortunately, I might have to, on my main account, I may have to buy into this one. This one, to me, just seems like if you really love the game and you want to go, like, just crazy with some damage on a limited time, this one might be worth spending a little on. She is a little spendy, um, but, she, I mean, she's one less than, like, a Vierna um, at 19. She does block two, like any standard um, attacker. Uh, revival 60 seconds. Uh, if we jump in here, uh, you can see, it, obviously, we're going to hit max level. So once you fully promote and get her six, or my kids are screaming, the background is driving me insane. Um, but you can see her attack is pretty dang high at 4,564. It's not the highest, but it, it's it's good, right? It's, that's a solid uh, attack. She has decent defense. I mean, it, it, you're going to want to get some, uh, I mean, let's who are we kidding we're gonna go all out attack with this chick um and and attack speed and, and we'll go, get back to why because her attack interval is a little high but uh, and all the other stats are, are pretty standard but uh, if we bounce back over here she has this additionally gained specialized attack speed with her talent basically what this means provides a greater reduction in attack interval based on the attack speed attribute so if you make her uh, it the long and short of it is it's going to take a lot less speed stats, uh, increase speed stats um, to bring her attack interval down. But if you go bonkers with attack speed, um, she's going to be going so fast. Um, I want, I'd like to get her as fast as I got my Mari going at a 0.9. I think that'd be absolutely insane. And basically this means that it's easier to get her to that 0.9 or sub one second interval um, with their speed set. You don't need as much increased speed stats on your gear to get her to that faster speed. So that's really cool too. It's the only one I know of that has that. Please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I have not seen that on another hero. Again, I haven't read through all of the stats of every hero in the game. I'll be honest. Uh, I kind of try to focus on the ones that I have, and I don't have a lot of ones that have some of this awesome stuff. If we look at her awakenings, her awakenings are fantastic. Um, this A1 is solid. Gains a shield with the strength of 2,000% the attack speed upon entering Demon Slaying Stance. So when you plop her into the game, she automatically goes into Demon Slaying Stance. She's going to have a 10-second shield that's 2,000% of her attack speed. So if you have 500 attack speed, you times that by 20, you're going to have a shield worth 10,000 uh, HP on her for 10 seconds. So she's going to basically come into the game dang near unkillable um, while smacking the crap out of the enemies. Uh, her A2 extra attack. Gotta, you love to see that on attack based hero. Uh, when the hero on her A3, when the hero is in demon slaying stance, reduces attack interval by another 20%. So more speed if you can get her awakened. I don't know how anyone's going to get these awakenings, so this is kind of moot points uh, if it's limited, unless you just go all out ham buying or you have billions of shards ready to go or summoning crystals. Uh, I don't know how anyone's going to do this if she's truly a limited uh, summon uh, or a limited uh, event. Her awaken 4 gives her some crit rate, so you can save a little bit on the gear. But uh, Awaken 5, when the hero is in Demon Slaying Stance, she becomes immune to death when receiving fatal damage. However, once the effect ends, she will instantly die. So it's not like uh, Brokeer, uh, where he goes into, you know, into the ice upon a fatal hit and you can heal him back up. She will instantly die. I think Baron does the same thing. I think he instantly dies. I don't think you can, you can heal Baron either. So similar to that. Now, to get Falcia, if you look at the event, Falcia Event Exclusive. 10x drop rate and guaranteed within 250 summons so you may not have to get to 250 summons but if you go 250 you are guaranteed to get her um, it looks like uh livian a fusible epic is also in the pool as a grand prize um so chances are probably good you're gonna pull olivian um with the 10x uh but but that's how you obtain her so you need to make sure that you're, you're stocking your summons right now. Do not waste them because Falcia is someone you're going to want to have. And this is a decent, albeit it, it, it's going to take a lot. And, you know, you never know what the devs have up their sleeves. They probably have it forced to like on 248, you'll get it guaranteed. So <laughs> that's just the way these games work. But anyhow, that. 
that's Falcia, you guys. Um, I think we'll save uh, we'll 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 save Aelin for a separate video, um, but I will be doing a video on her very very soon. But uh, if you guys are excited as excited as I am about Falcia, let me know in the comments. Are you going to get her? Is this a must have for your account? If you're needing single target damage, I would say absolutely going to be a game changer on a lot of people's accounts. You know, if you have the Salazars and, you know, so, you know they, uh, we gotta, it's just, yeah. but you gotta, I mean, the, the, we gotta reassure, look, here, my, uh, man, who am I thinking, is Salazar, who's some other just amazing fighters, I, I'm drawing a blank, I, I do that at my age, you just draw blanks, but uh, she's gonna be an amazing fighter, uh, that's gonna help a lot of progression, so, I am going to see what it's going to take to get her. Uh, if it's reasonable, I'm I'm definitely going to try to get her. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview. I hope you guys liked the commentation on the artwork and the read through of the story. I think that's super fun and super cool. So if you do, make sure you subscribe, guys. Uh, like the video. Comment below. Are you going for her? Are you excited about her? And are you? Do you like the lore? Do you like this kind of video where we dive more in depth beyond just the kit and what they can bring uh, to your actual gameplay so uh turn on notifications we're gonna have that alien video out uh probably not too long after this i just don't want it to be a big long run on video like it can tend to be with me um so anyhow appreciate you guys watching thank you for watching till the end and we will see you guys in the next video take care